So shall we start? Uh, honorable VC sir, shall we start sir? Better one two minutes we can wait. He'll come, I think. Um, phone has come, no? Let's say he just went out. So a very good morning to Professor uh, Kiyas uh, Sambasiwala, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mizoram University, a very vibrant researcher of biological sciences, a learned teacher and table administrator. Very good morning to today's speaker, uh, Dr. Nagel Kumar Kaushik, Kwangun University, Seoul, South Korea. The deans, HODs, faculty members, staff, students of NZU and participants from other institutions. I, Professor Ramji Singh, along with my colleague, Professor Jitri Hazarika, HOD and on behalf of the faculty and staff of the Total Health Department, we welcome all of you to this webinar. Uh, friends, before we start, I would like to appraise today's speaker and the participant about this webinar series. This webinar series was initiated by our visionary Vice Chancellor for continuous learning and exposure of the staff and students of NZU uh, during this uh, pandemic period. In the past three months' time, the university has organized uh, this past three months pandemic and the earlier pandemic as well, the university has organized more than 200 webinars. So I'm very happy to share that uh, though uh, that through these webinars, we have interacted with very learned professors and experts from some of the top institutions across the globe, like MIT USA, the uh, number one uh, uh, institute in the world, then uh, University of Oxford, UK, on number two position, and other very uh, renowned institutions like Emory University USA, University of Minnesota USA, then University of Manchester UK, Imperial College London and many more. So we are very thankful to our Honorable Vice Chancellor for this great learning opportunity. Uh, I, uh, I think uh, VC sir is a little bit uh, busy and uh, he will uh, join either in the end or whenever like uh, he is uh, free for the meeting. So no, I'm, I'm here, I'm hearing. Uh, okay. I don't need to. I don't need to speak. I will be listening. Okay. 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 okay sir. So, uh, with kind permission of the Vice Chancellor, uh, I again uh, uh, welcome all of you. And uh, now I uh, invite our uh, speaker of today's conference with this brief introduction, uh, Dr. Nagendra Kumar Kaushik. Uh, he uh, received his uh, PhD in biological sciences uh, from the University of Delhi in 2010. And then from uh, after completing his PhD, he joined uh, Kwangon University, Seoul, as assistant professor. And here currently he's working as an associate professor in uh, Plasma Biosciences Research Center. His research work at PBRC. His research work at PBRC is primarily focused on plasma uh, medicine, cancer biology, immune modulation, nanobiotechnology and biomaterials. Recently, his group explored the application of plasma bioscience in food and agriculture products. He has published over 105 research papers. Some of them have been in very reputed and high impact journals like cancer research, scientific reports, cancer, cell communication and signaling, International Journal of Nanomedicine and Biomaterials. Dr. Nagendra is on the editorial board of many prestigious journals such as Scientific Report, PLOS One, Applied Sciences, Oxidative Medicine and Cellular, longevity and current pharmaceutical biotechnology. So I invite uh, Dr. Nagendra to kindly deliver his lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this nice introduction. And first of all, I want to thank you, uh, uh, Professor Rao, Vice Chancellor of uh, Mizoram University and Professor Hajarika and uh, also Professor Dr. Rambir Singhji. Uh, you are my teacher, as you know. That and I will start with introduction of my uh, center. So can I share here my yes, screen? You can start. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, just a second, sir. Uh, I request all the participants to post their your questions. Mm, in can the you question. see uh, uh, this PPTs? Uh, yes, please wait. It is yes, it is visible. You can go on the slideshow. Yes, it is visible. Okay, sir. Okay. So if you have any problem, like if you face any uh, dis in net disconnection or some voice problem, please let me know in between uh, during my presentation. So I will start uh, with the title. Applic uh, the title of this webinar is uh, Application of Cold Plasma in Agriculture, Food and Medicine at Mizoram University, Ajal, India. And myself, Nagendra Kumar Kaushik, I'm working in Plasma Bioscience Research Institute as well as in Department of Electrical and Biological Physics at Kangon University, Seoul, Korea. So first of all, I want to explain you about my university. This is, uh, these pictures can tell something about university. New university is a very uh, well-designed university, well-planned university. We have smart classrooms. We have uh, smart dormitories. We have smart uh, interaction rooms or community rooms as well as library. And uh, this is my center, Plasma Bioscience Research Institute. One second, I want to. So this is Plasma Bioscience Research Institute and this is R&D facility in our institute. This is our building, Plasma Bioscience Institute or Plasma Bioscience Research Center building. And we have many kinds of facilities such as uh, device manufacturing, testing facilities for to make plasma, various kinds of plasma devices. It's, a, it's like a clean room. And we have molecular and microbiological uh, facility. And uh, we can grow, uh, we can uh, culture many kinds of microbes, including virus, bacteria, and fungus. We have animal houses, two animal house rooms, and we have BSL2 uh, cell culture facility to work on uh, low pathogenic viruses also. And we have plant culture room, as well as we have many kind of uh, machines or equipments which are necessary for uh, any kind of R&D. We have more than 50 uh, big research equipments in uh, PBRC. And this is a photograph uh, of 2016, where we got collaboration with the Max Planck Institute, that is INP, Institute of Nether Plasma from Germany. So we have a Max Planck Institute, INP Germany, <clears throat> with our PBRC. So chronicle of PBRC, I will tell this, this center is basically uh, organized by Professor Yun Ha Choi. In 1992, he started with the charged particle beam plasma laboratory. And in 1995, he uh, uh, made another uh, max, uh, uh, microwave generator that is Chundong Pulsar for defense as well as biomedical applications. And in 1998, he got big project for uh, plasma display panels. Uh, as you remember that we have a plasma television before 10 or 15 years. Nowadays, people are using LED and other kinds of televisions. But previously, plasma televisions were very famous and it is invented uh, from our center. Plasma Bioscience Research Center is, we named it in 2010, but before that it was the center for plasma uh, display panel together with Samsung and LG. In 2004, uh, he got another big project for a plasma display panel. And 2010, we focused on the bioscience research and we got big project from government again for 10 years. And the project name was Plasma Bioscience Research Center. In 2011, we started our first international conference that, uh, that, that is uh, International Symposium on Plasma Bioscience in Seoul. After that, we organized this conference at many places and already 10 uh, conferences we finished uh, because of Corona. Last year, we postponed it. It will, be, it will again uh, will be organized in Seoul in December. And 2016, we organized ISPB together with International Work Team Con Congress at Bushan. So Professor Rao already visited Bushan. Uh, this, there is a very big conference uh, auditorium there. So we organized in the same auditorium, this conference. In 2016, I already told you, we got a very big project that is a pl Applied Plasma Medicine Center. And we got Plasma Medicine Award by uh, world famous ICPM community. 
in 2016. And recently we got very big project on the environmental and uh, biological issues going on nowadays, such as fine dust particles or some decontamination uh, contamination of soil, water and everything. And that name of project is Plasma Bioscience Institute. So we are, we are in this project, we are focused on environmental issues, contamination issues, as well as virus infections and bacterial and fungal infections. So we will target uh, all those things uh, by using plasmas. So this is about Plasma Bioscience Research Center. Uh, we are totally 10, 110 members, including students. And we are focused on various kinds of uh, devices Usually plasma have electrons and ions, ROS and RNS and radicals, which we can use to synthesize bio nanoparticles, which we can use to inactivate viruses, which we can use to uh, coagulate blood or wound healing. And we can work on uh, organic biomolecule synthesis and as well as uh, modification of minerals. And as well as we are working on uh, cells, eukaryotic, prokaryotic cells, and and we are also focused on the genetic materials such as DNA and RNA of uh, various kinds of cells. And our final target is proliferation, differentiation, or in case of cancer uh, uh, researches, apoptosis or autophagy uh, for final biological and medical applications. And this is about international network. We are connected with uh, 30 affiliations worldwide, and we are connected with uh, 15 countries and 15 domestic institute, we have MOU and collaboration in Korea. So uh, main is Germany. We have very big project with INP Leibniz Institute Germany for six year. And we have some collaboration from Delhi University also, not very official, but uh, we have collaboration from India also. Basically, I want to tell you about the plasma first before going to the uh, application part. So plasma is just fourth state of matter like solid liquid gas. So plasma, uh, if you give uh, energy to solid, you can make liquid. And if you give energy to liquid, you can make gas. And if you get, give uh, energy to any kind of gas, you can make plasma. So plasma is four state of matter. You can say ionized gas. This is just ionized gas. It consists, it con uh, includes ions, electrons, RONS, reactive oxygen and nitrogen species, some amount of UV, and some amount of heat together with uh, some electric field. So usually this is the example, uh, one example to show about the RONS chemistry. So plasma is generated by device. This is an example of jet plasma device. We have various kinds of devices. I will tell you later. So whenever plasma is generated by these devices, first they make atomic species such as nitrogen, M positive nitrogen, oxygen, atomic species or M atomic species, hydrogen atomic species. Also it forms uh, hydroxy radicals, NO, nitric oxide. Some amount of UV is there and some amount of electric field is there. These primary species further react with the ambient air, which consists uh, nitrogen, uh, water, and uh, oxygen molecules, and further form more stable uh, reactive species. Uh, we call them secondary reactive species. Uh, these secondary reactive species are mainly nitric oxide, H2O2, ozone, singlet oxygen, HNO2, HN, HO2, and superoxide. And further, these re reactive species react with the target or the water or liquids and forms uh, uh, tertiary reactive species, or you can say reactive species inside liquid or target. And those final reactive species are uh, OH, uh, NO2, NO3, H2O2, HNO3, HNO2, NO, and peroxynitrile, ozone. So we can use all those species for various kind of biological applications by any device. So we have in this in these species we have reactive oxygen species. Uh, I already told you all these are reactive oxygen species, and we also have reactive nitrogen species such as nitric oxide, very well known molecule for the treatment of various diseases as well as peroxynitrite. So we can use plasma for various uh, kind of medical applications. So we can sterilize, if we say about medicine, we can sterilize medical devices by using plasma. We can uh, treat cells or skin or cancers, or we can use for uh, other many other biomedical applications. If we talk about environment, we can uh, treat uh, wastewater, 
we can decontaminate wastewater, we can uh, decontaminate these gases, exhaust gases. And uh, if we talk about agriculture, we can uh, induce uh, growth and induce uh, defense hormone, immunity hormone in plant products such as fruit and vegetable. And we can you also use this plasma for preservation processes. I will tell you in my la last slides. And in dentistry case, we can uh, sterilize dental devices as well as we can use uh, plasma for tooth cleaning, tooth whitening, as well as uh, we can treat cells of uh, dental cells for regrowth of tooth or uh, for reformation of tooth and gums. So these are the some, some applications, not all applications uh, by using plasma. This is plasma Jew. We have various kinds of plasmas in PBRC. This is soft jet plasma. I will not go through this uh, electronic properties, electrical properties. I will just show you the type of plasmas. And microwave jet plasma, FEDBD. FEDBD is floating electrode DBD in which the object itself, animal or object itself act as a one electrode. This is my uh, floating electrode DBD jet plasma, floating electrode DBD plasma, another type. And this is micro DBD. It's a PDP panel type. PDB television panel type uh, device. And this is also PDP panel type uh, device of 30 centimeter and annual jet plasma, nanosecond pulse plasma. So these are few uh, plasma devices which we developed at PBRC. So this is the video you can see. This is the market available plasma go. So you can find in market. Plasma jet, you can see that kind of uh, plume below this uh, nozzle. And this is PDP panel type device for plasma generation. This is big plasma device, PDP panel type for treatment purposes, wide area treatment purposes. This is floating jet floating electrode jet plasma or itself is the electrode here. This is floating DBD plasma. This is plasma in water. Synthesize nanomaterial. This is gold nanoparticle synthesis by using just plasma without having any harsh chemicals. This is seed treatment device. We can treat seeds of various plants by using this device. This is device for uh, uh, sterilization, air sterilization. So these were. Uh, uh, few kind of devices I showed you. Basically, uh, here I can show you the uh, species formation from the distance from the nozzle. So this is the nozzle, plasma nozzle. If you, uh, if you uh, zero is the plasma nozzle and this is density at y-axis. So we have various kind of species uh, uh, formed or generated by this kind of plasma. So it, Near the nozzle of plasma, we don't have many species. We have just atomic species. But if we go a little bit far from the nozzle of plasma, like two uh, centimeter, then we can have various kinds of species such as nitric oxide, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxy radicals, HNO3, NO3, H, H atoms, as well as HO2, and superoxides. So these all uh, reactive species we can use for various purposes. We have we are focused on various kind of application. When uh, for ROS case, reactive oxygen species case, we are working for bacterial and virus sterilization, as well as cancer cell apoptosis. And uh, for reactive nitrogen species case, we are working for to uh, differentiate cells and for wound healing purposes, as well as uh, to reduce inflammation, acute or chronic inflammation. And we can use two kind of strategies to treat uh, animals or cell culture by plasma. 
one is direct method in this method we can directly treat cell culture as well as animals by uh, direct plasma devices and we have another method in which we used to treat uh, solutions or media or uh, liquids water by plasma first and after this treatment we can inject it to the animals and we can uh, also put on the cell culture system so this is called plasma activated media or plasma activated uh, stimulated media or water so the project we are working with germany people inp germany uh, the main goal of that project are atopy hair loss wrinkles p acne and melanoma so we already worked on the microbial uh, proliferation and selective killing as well as we worked on uh, proliferation differentiation of cell and selective apoptosis in cancer and now our focus in uh, focus are this kind of disease in this uh, collaborative project with germany this is example of german lady uh, this is uh, pictures by our doctor uh, collaborator doctor professor hr metelman from germany uh, this lady came for cosmetic surgery and he did this person did surgery on that lady and this kind of surgery takes at least 2 to 3 month to recover fully but he, uh, on the third day he treated this lady after surgery with plasma and found very drastic changes even at the 12 days all wounds are recovered and she is uh, very fine in this plastic surgery after day 17 you can see images of this so this is some kind of wound healing application by using plasma this is another example of clinical use uh, diabetic wound this is the picture of diabetic wound and uh, this same uh, professor clinical professor treated this wound with plasma usually this wound cannot be treated easily and this person have this wound since from many years and he came to this surgeon and he treated this uh, he did some surgery reconstructive surgery together with plasma and this wound is uh, closed within 3 week and another example this is melanoma skin cancer the same professor treated this skin cancer uh, on ear and it is also recovered within one month after treatment by using plasma and side effect by this professor he said he never found any side effect on human uh, during this application so this plasma is very safe for clinical or human use so we are also working on different project uh, we initiated last year one project that is on hair loss treatment so we are working on it our strategy is based on the no mechanism nitric oxide mechanism which have very important role in hair growth so we already did some experiment with epidermal thickness collagen synthesis and hair follicle thickness and we found very good results increased exp uh, expression of all these related genes in our experiments and uh, our strategy is to uh, lead led and ld technology led is the uh, diode as well as laser laser emitting diode and laser uh, devices to compete this in market because these these devices have some side effect our plasma also don't have a, a very good competitor because we don't have any side effect known side effect with with plasma devices so i now i will explain you something about plasma cancer treatment in this part i will explain about the direct plasma treatment as well as combination with nanomaterials or combination with other drugs so this is the scenario in korea in cancer cases most common cancer in man is lung and most common cancer in women in is breast in korea uh, in korea and the second most common cancer is stomach and colon and other cancers comes behind them average human death is 10 million per year in case of cancer it's a big number and the treatment strategies available is uh, our surgery radiation and chemotherapy nowadays uh, immunotherapy is also very main strategy but the problem with immunotherapy uh, is uh, the price of drugs so this is one example of drug pdl1 inhibitor checkpoint inhibitor drug and its cost per vial is $13000 so it's outreach of uh, common man common man cannot use easily this kind of drug for whole cancer therapy it lasts up to 6 months so this is very impossible for uh, many people in this world so we need to think about the some alternative strategies so plasma can be the one strategy to treat cancer these kind of cancers plasma have dose dependent effect always on cells 
plasma can show healing effect such as cell stimulation, migration, proliferation, and wound healing. And plasma can also have a killing effects such as cell cycle arrest, induction of cell death, such as apoptosis, necrosis, or autophagy. So it totally depends on the plasma parameter. Uh, plasma exposure totally depends on the device, working gases, treatment strategies, treatment time, input energy, voltage and currents, and uh, repeated exposure or continuous exposure or one-time exposure. So many things are involved uh, on doses for this kind of things. So here you can see that we can use plasma up to uh, four uh, joule per centimeter, according to energy, it's four joule per centimeter square. Up to this energy, we can use plasma for various kind of uh, normal cell functions and uh, tumor cell killing because there is no uh, damage to the normal cells up to this dose. But after this dose, uh, we can have a slight toxicity to the normal cells. So plasma usually work. Uh, I will sell, tell you about the cell interaction with plasma here. Plasma can generate various kinds of uh, uh, reactive oxygen and reactive nitrogen species in gas phase. And these species further can interact with liquid to form more stable species uh, in liquid and interact with the target such as cell surfaces. And this effect is not only localized. It can be go to the whole body by cell, cell to cell communication. That is very common effect uh, called bystander effect in radiation biology. And also immune cell can be activated uh, and which can go to the whole part, other part of the body uh, to show this kind of effect. Also localized effect we can found that is blood flow, increased blood flow and increased oxygen concentration in localized area. That is very important in the coronavirus, uh, uh, this situation to increase oxygen. And one more thing, cancer can be affected at very low dose of plasma. However, normal cell can be affected at a little bit higher dose of plasma. So we can have treatment window for the treatment uh, for various kinds of strategies and therapies. And this is selectivity model. We, uh, we checked on the cancer cell as well as on the normal cell. We treated both kinds of cells by same dose of plasma and found that the cancer cell have more apoptosis and normal cell even have proliferation at the same dose. So this is, uh, so we can say plasma is very selective to the specific cell type. And this selectivity is based on many things. One more, one most important thing is residual ROS. Residual ROS in cancer cases, a cancer cell is more as compared to normal cell. This is the normal cell, this is cancer cell. If we give burden uh, by plasma generated ROS to this cancer cells, they can easily reach to the threshold level and eventually go for apoptosis and various kinds of uh, other pathways activation. However, there is no, uh, no effect on the normal cell because still they can be below threshold level. And two more things are very important. On cancer cell, we have more pores and more receptor as compared to normal cells. So delivery of ROS from the uh, outside can be easily achieved in cancer cell as compared to normal cell. And third thing, very important thing is that cancer cell have very weak antioxidant uh, capacity as compared to normal cells. So that's why uh, by this burden, this, uh, this cancer cell cannot be cope up easily and eventually go for a uh, cascade of cell death or pathways. So this was the selectivity model. And this is about the plasma effect on time scale. Plasma can be generated in, uh, from nanosecond to microseconds or seconds. After generation, they can produce uh, ROS up to minutes. And then you can treat your samples uh, by this kind of ROS. And this, uh, this RONS can transport to the cell membrane within uh, hours. And you can have various kinds of biological effect up to many days by this, using this kind of plasmas. And this is about pathway. Uh, plasma generated ROS can have various kinds of uh, pathway activations for adapter, adaptation cases, uh, antioxidant enzyme expression, glutathione system, or redox mechanisms, redox buffering system, thyroidoxin system. And uh, for apoptosis cases, it can uh, induce caspase related molecules, lipid peroxidation it can induce, and it can induce this pathway, MAPK or ERK pathways, as well as can induce necrosis or oxidative stress. 
in autophagy case, they mainly uh, go through ATGs 8 and NF kappa beta together with uh, membrane ATC. And in an enhanced drug sensitivity case, JNK and SAP kinase, uh, P glycoprotein uh, dependent pathways, or also many kind of oncogenic pathways. So various other me mechanisms are uh, showed by many researchers worldwide. So these are some uh, pathways which are uh, which can be induced by the plasma. So we are also focused on the nanomaterial plasma with uh, various kind of nanomaterial for synergy effect. So plasma can synthesize nanomaterial. We can synthesize uh, various kind of nanomaterial by using plasma, and this nanomaterial also can have various kind of biomedical application. So we are also working on it. We are using both plasma plus nanomaterial together for biomedical applications. One work we recently published is the formation of um, generation of uh, gold nanoparticles, PD, PDA coated gold nanoparticle. This is polydopamine, PDA is polydopamine here. And we used it for immunotherapy, uh, ICD gen, uh, induction in cancer cell, in breast cancer cells. We published this article in Green Chemistry. Another article was on the mechanism, how plasma can enhance uh, delivery of nanoparticles. So mechanism is very, uh, that mechanism is very clear. The plasma can induce reversible leaky membrane or it can induce uh, formation of pores, reversible uh, pores in the cell membrane, which are responsible for this kind of effects. In one paper we published in biomaterials, uh, we checked uh, the combination effect of PG, polyethylene glycol coated gold nanoparticle together with plasma, and we found enhanced uptake in cancer cells. We checked uh, uh, this work in in vivo, uh, uh, in vivo experiments also, and we found that in nude mice, the tumor volume and tumor weight both are reduced, as well as we checked EMT markers such as e catadrine and catadrine and vimentin, and we found that the normal EMT marker that uh, that represent normal cells e catadrine is increased. However, other markers which are related to uh, mesenchymal uh, phenotype such as n catadrine vimentin. Uh, jab one slug, all are reduced uh, in vivo, in, in our in vivo experiment. We confirmed this results by PCR also. And also we targeted stemness in this cancers in animal. And we found that the stem cells, the well-known, we, we checked the stem cells by using CD133. CD133 is a well-known uh, marker uh, on the surface of uh, glioma cells. Uh, brain cancer cells, we checked it, and we found that the, after this combination treatment, CD133 is also reducing in the cancer population. That is very good sign uh, for, meta, for meta, metastasis inhibition and EMT inhibition, as well as cancer stem cells. We did many kind of study after that, uh, together uh, with plasma, with uh, nanomaterials. Up to now, we published more than uh, 15 papers on this topic. And we are also focused on the metabolic modifier together with plasma. This is 2DG molecule. Uh, this is well-known molecule nowadays because the government of India is also using this 2DG molecule for the treatment of coronavirus together with, in collaboration with the DRDO in mass nowadays. So I also worked in in mass and I also uh, uh, use that strategy uh, to treat cancers. So 2DG usually inhibit glycolysis. And uh, if we make our cancer cell weak by inhibiting glycolysis, and at that time, if we treat our cells with plasma, we can have significant amount of apoptosis. We proved in scientific report in 2015. And another molecule is also there, DCA. And if we use this DCA molecule, this is also a, a metabolic modifier. It can normalize uh, mitochondria. If we can normalize mitochondria and give plasma treatment, we can have uh, two kinds of effect. One is more apoptosis, another is the CSC maintenance. Cancer cell, uh, cancer stem cell maintenance will be uh, affected significantly. So both papers are published up to now. We also checked various kind of other market available drugs, such as doxorubicin, we commonly call doxo, epirubicin, EPI, oxyplatin, oxa, together with plasma. And we found that the, when we use uh, these two uh, these drugs together with plasma, we have more uh, immunogenic uh, marker, immunogenic cell death markers in our cancer cell population, such as uh, ATP and then chemokine 10. 
and the, uh, this also affect the uh, tumor spheroid size. So we tested on the tumor spheroid, which represent cancer stemness in this experiment. So I will tell you something about immunomodulation, how we can use plasma for immunoactivation or uh, inducing ICD or selectivity. So plasma we can use for immunomodulation. We have four strategies. One strategy is immunogenic cancer cell death. We can induce immunogenic cancer cell death by plasma in cancers. And uh, we can directly uh, activate or stimulate uh, uh, immune cells or leukocytes. Third strategy is we can neutralize immunosuppression suppression factors in tumor microenvironment by using plasma. And we can also focus on the vaccine, dendritic cell-based vaccines or ICD-based uh, ICD vaccines for future use. Our first study was on uh, stimulating macrophages. We stimulated macrophages by plasma. And after this activation, these macrophages uh, release various kinds of uh, higher, higher release of various kinds of uh, interleukin or chemokin. And eventually we got uh, significant cell death in co-culture condition with cancer cells. So this is that study, uh, that uh, first study in 2016, we reported it. Uh, we treated uh, macrophages. You can see a well-defined uh, uh, differentiation in this example. And we also check the mortality by scratch assay as well as invasion and migration assay in this in this study. And we found that the both mortality is increasing by uh, invasion and migration as well as wound uh, scratch assays. And we checked the viability of this macrophages after plasma treatment. And we found that the viability is not affected too much uh, after plasma stimulation. We co-culture these macrophages with cancer cells uh, two kinds of cancer cells, glioma and lung cancer cells, and found that the in co-culture condition, these uh, mac stimulated macrophages are inhibiting the growth of uh, both glioma and lung cancer cells. And we checked the mechanism and we found that the mechanism responsible here is uh, uh, based on TNF alpha and ion is released by the this stimulated macrophages. Other study also we did to check uh, uh, migration of this macrophages, small studies, as well as we check the selectivity of this stimulated macrophages on cancer and normal cells. We stimulated macrophages and co-culture with cancer as well as normal cell. And we found that the normal cell even uh, showed a proliferation. However, cancer cells are going for cell death, uh, such as apoptosis in co-culture condition. So these macrophages are really selective for cancer cell uh, without affecting normal cells. In another study published in Cancer Cancer's Journal, we treated monocyte, uh, blood monocyte, not macrophages. We treated blood monocyte and formed macrophages from this monocyte and then checked uh, stimulation, anti-cancer effect and acute release in co-culture condition with cancer cells. So we, this is the differentiation data. So by using plasma, this uh, monocyte can be easily differentiated. And we checked the, whether these monocytes are M1 monocyte, uh, uh, whether, whether these macrophages are M1 macrophages or M2 macrophages. The difference between the M1 and M2 macrophages is that M1 are anti-cancer macrophages and M2 are angiogenic wound healing, or you can say uh, tumor supporting macrophages. So we checked CD marker to check that and we found that the, these macrophages are really more towards M1 rather than M2. We confirmed this data with flow cytometric uh, results also. We checked the microarray, gene microarray uh, uh, of this treated uh, macrophages and found that the, these macrophages have more expression on uh, interleukin or chemokin gene, which are responsible for uh, tumor killing mechanisms or tumor inhibiting mechanisms. And we confirmed this data with the RT-PCR uh, results also. We co-cultured these macrophages with uh, uh, various uh, gliomas. The, when we co-culture these uh, macrophages, uh, inhibition is very high as compared to normal cases. In another study, we taken spinocyte from mice and we made, spino, uh, we made uh, in vitro spinocyte culture. And we treated this spinocyte with plasma and co-cultured with the uh, melanoma cell, the skin cancer cells, and found that a significant effect even by 30 seconds of plasma activation of these macrophages, uh, these uh, splenocytes. 
we also checked various kind of interleukin and chemokines in the splenocytes and found that the, some some interleukins are really uh, inhibiting interleukins, which are which may be responsible for this kind of inhibition. And later we did some studies on ICD and DAMP. ICD is immogenic cell death, and DAMP is damage associated molecular pattern. These are well known uh, uh, phenomena nowadays in immunotherapy, cancer immunotherapy, or you can say cancer immunity cycle. So usually when cancer cells have stress, they used to release various kinds of molecules such as ATP, carlatoclin on the surface of membrane, as well as uh, they used to release nuclear factors, uh, HMGB1, as well as uh, we can have various kinds of interleukins and chemokine released by these cells, these dying cells. This, this factor released by dying cell can, be, uh, can attract various kinds of other immune cells to, uh, to affect this kind of cancers. And this whole process is called ICD, immunogenic cell death. The well-known damp molecule response, uh, during ICD release, uh, during ICD are released, uh, are ATP molecules, which we called find me signal, CRT molecule, which we called eat me signal, and HMGB1, nuclear factor, and heat shock protein 90, 70, and other heat shock proteins. So these, these are very important uh, damp molecules, which are released during ICD cell death by any stress, radiation, chemotherapy, or plasma treatment, anything. We checked in our treatment, we treated a cancer cell by plasma and we checked ATP and CRT. And we found that the ecto CRT, CRT on the membrane of cell is increased, as well as we checked the extracellular ATP uh, is increased. We cross check it with the uh, inhibitors and found that these are real uh, cross check its uh, increase by using various kind of scavengers. And we also checked uh, what kind of plasma constituents are responsible for this increase in the damp molecule in cancer cells. We checked complete plasma. We checked, uh, we used some barriers to check electric field, UV, long-lived species, nitrogen species, or oxygen species. And finally, we got that the oxygen species and the charged species are responsible mainly to induce ICD in this cancer population. And we also compare the treatment uh, in one uh, review paper. We compare non-thermal plasma we can, with the radiation therapy and PDT. PDT is well-known therapy, uh, photodynamic therapy nowadays in hospitals. And it is uh, called to be very safe, but I will tell you here something surprising. We, in this review paper, we, uh, we uh, taken many factors such as target, invasiveness, or a procedure of application, side effects, mechanism of action, and depth of effect, uh, including IZD generation, as well as finally, we take a uh, direct effect on immune cell by these treatments. When we compared all these three treatment strategies, we found that the plasma don't have any kind of major uh, uh, side effect, but in case of radiation therapy, you can see some skin changes, second cancer formation, side specific side effect, and as well as damage to nearby organs. Even in PDT, we found skin changes or rashes. And one more important thing to be considered here, direct effect on immune cell, we found plasma have preservation role or differentiation role or stimulatory role. But in case of radiation therapy, it is really suppressive to the immune cells. As well as well-known therapy that is called PDT is also have suppressive uh, in nature for direct immune cell effects. And this is the data of worldwide oncology, plasma oncology studies. So first ranking, this, is, this paper is published in uh, 2018 and first ranking is given to the USA because many plasma group are working there. And we are happy to share this news that we, are, we stood at second rank. The Korea is very small in size in, if we compare the whole other countries and still we are on second rank because of our uh, dynamic uh, plasma Biosciences is a center and the dynamic director who is uh, administrating our center together with us. And this is the real case of uh, clinical uh, treatment. So after surgery of tumor, breast cancer is uh, removed from here in this region. And the leftover uh, cancer cells, uh, microscopic cancer cells are treated by this kind of device, plasma jet device. 
Uh, this study is, is done by our collaborator from George Washington University and Purdue University at USA. So this is a good news that we can we can ha we have many kind of uh, clinical application nowadays by plasma and approved by FDA. Now I will go for plasma based agriculture. In our center, we are focused on uh, seed germination and pathogen resistance, as well as we are working on plasma fertilizers, as well as uh, we are focused on food safety and food preservation. I will go for the uh, first global food security index. I will tell you the uh, story here. So if you see this map here, India stood at 56.2% uh, index, GFSI index. Even the neighboring countries such as Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Pakistan don't have uh, any good situation. If we check some uh, developed country such as Finland, South Korea, Australia, even China, have better situation than India. This is because of the problem in the storage of food material, as well as the way of uh, agriculture. So in our country, we are using various kinds of fertilizer, chemical fertilizer, which are responsible for the degradation of soil, as well as water. So maybe many factors are involved uh, that we have this kind of very less uh, security index, food security index, as compared to other world. So we have to think about the better agriculture process uh, in future. This is about the plasma nitrogen fixation. By using just oxygen molecule, nitrogen molecule, and hydrogen molecule, we can make, we can fix nitrogen, and we can make a nitric oxide, nit uh, NO2, and ammonia uh, just by plasma. This whole process is also synthesized by, uh, the, by some kind of industries, such as by using Haber boss process and other kind of processes. And they are energy consuming processes and exhaust many kind of greenhouse gases, which are also responsible for many global environmental issues. And this process is also done by the natural way that is called lightning. Lightning is also, I want to tell you one thing more here. We have two kinds of plasma, hot plasmas and cold plasma in this world. And very nice example of hot plasma is lightning. So lightning is a plasma, uh, it's, con it's come under uh, hot plasma. And we are using non-thermal plasma, cold plasma, for various bi biomedical as well as agriculture purposes that we can touch by our hand also. This is nitrogen cycle. I will explain in next slide. So nitrogen you can fix to ammonia, that is called nitrogen fixation. And this uh, ammonia can be converted to NOx, NO2 or NO3, that is called nitrification. And further, it can be uh, denitrific uh, denitrification, go through the denitrification and forms nitrogen again. Uh, and this N2, this nitrogen also can directly form NOx, that is also called nitrogen fixation, fixation process. And this both process, this process and this process we can do easily by plasma without uh, consuming too much energy for a sustainable future. So these are example, natural example, that is lightning to fix nitrogen in the soil. So plant cannot use uh, environmental nitrogen easily. So we have some methods and like natural nitrogen, this uh, natural method or synthetic method by some urea or ammonia, or we have nat another natural method that is uh, azotobacter found in root nodules of logium plants. So we can use uh, the plant maybe may use this kind of method to fix nitrogen or some agriculture people use uh, synthetic uh, fertilizers. Uh, for the nitrogen fixation for things. So this is the demand of nitrogen fertilizer worldwide. You can see it is increasing year by year, as well as in Korea, it is increasing. So main, main common, commonly people use urea, ammonia, ammonium nitrate, calcium ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate worldwide. In Korea specifically, people also use, India also, uh, diammonium phosphate, urea, NPK, uh, nitrogen, uh, potassium nitrate, monoammonium phosphate, ammonium sulfate, ammonium nitrate. The big problem here, this synthetic fertilizers have uh, some problem with soil and water always, and usually it degrade the quality of soils. So we have to be very careful to use this kind of synthetic fertilizers. So many times that's why many people say about the organic fertilizers or some alternative way of fertilizers. 
so that can be that here plasma really can help to the agriculture people so how plasma works i will tell you this is the feeding stock for plasma you can we can use feed gas such as nitrogen hydrogen water or methane ethyl alcohol and we can have dissociation excitation and ionization reaction by supplying energy to this feed stocks and in intermediate state they used to form uh, active species such as atomic nitrogen atomic hydrogen hydroxy radical nh ns2 and nitrogen radical and nitrogen ions which specifically combine together and forms ammonia no2 no3 and other molecules this product can be used as a fertilizer and the advantage of this method plasma based method is very low cost you just need uh, sustainable energy that is electricity do no, and they don't emit any kind of uh, greenhouse gases and this plasma technology is uh, can be used for localized uh, small scale sites also farmlands also and this technology not only provide plant nutrients but also induce defense hormones and defense gene expression defense related genes expression so this this technology this plasma treatment is also increasing the immunity of the uh, plant against fungus infection and virus in, uh, viral infections and as well as um, bacterial infections and disease so we already proved this thing in our several previous paper this is uh, about the uh, energy uh, related uh, goals so our goal plasma researchers goals is goal is here we need to synthesize our target is this green circle we need to synthesize uh, ammonia concentration up to uh, 10000 ppm by using uh, 100 gram of uh, ammonia uh, per kilowatt hour our many devices are very near to this target for sustainable uh, the future and we are working more to attain this target in future so we use dbd plasma dbd pulse generated plasma glow discharge microwave discharge and radio frequency discharge etc for this purpose and when we check the energy consumption the biological uh, our plasma is very near to the biological fixation we have very wide variety of range of plasmas so some plasma really relate uh, at the level of biological fixation some the chemical synthesis process are at at very high level of energy consumption cyanamide process is also high that haber bosch process very well known process uh, for the nitrogen fixation by uh, for nitrogen um, for making fertilizer is also at very high level of energy consumption and release various kind of greenhouse gases in this process uh, which is not good for a uh, sustainable future of this earth so for plasma cases this is the one example we can uh, use air gas air gas is easily available we just need a compressor air compressor air gas compressor here and we can provide this air gas feed gas to the plasma and uh, by putting some electricity and electrical energy here we can treat water if it can be from well or river and this treated water we can uh, send to our agriculture soil agriculture as well as hydroponic system that is well known system in world, uh, worldwide for future uh, use so in future you can see this kind of hydroponic system everywhere even in india for better performance in agriculture in this is our one recent study uh, we treated uh, plasma uh, we treated water with our plasma and uh, we checked the growth of corn plant growth and development of corn plant for this study we used plasma device this jet plasma device we checked its electrical and physical properties and the interesting thing is that in this water di water we used metal ions which taken three metal ions metals uh, zinc metal aluminum metal and magnesium metal and when we treated uh, this water with plasma we found that the when uh, the magnesium uh, active plasma activated water where magnesium we have magnesium it have uh, more ammonia formation more nox formation less hydrogen peroxide and very uh, good ph very near to the normal level of ph which we can use easily for the plant fertilizer process as compared to other metal we checked seed germination by using this water magnesium water 
as well as other metal water and we found that the magnesium plasma activated water is very uh, significantly showing a seed germination rate higher as compared to normal other metal or just controls we also checked the shoot length uh, of this uh, plant by magne using magnesium uh, plasma activated water as well as other metal uh, plasma activated water and we found that the magnesium plasma activated water is showing uh, higher shoot length as compared to other controls and other metal lines. We also checked the shoot length and root length uh, by this treatment and found that the ma maximum effect, uh, more effect we have from the magnesium plasma activated water. As well as we checked the dry weight, dry weight is also higher in magnesium plasma activated water in this study. We checked the chlorophyll content, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, as well as we checked the, checked the soluble protein and found that the everywhere we found very nice and uh, surprising result by magnesium plasma activated water as compared to other control and uh, other metal uh, water. And uh, the mechanism behind is that when we use in this reaction, magnesium is very compatible. Uh, so usually it produces a lot of hydrogen and this hydrogen further can uh, uh, react with the nitrogen to form ammonia and it, uh, mainly it reduces uh, acidity in the water. That is, uh, acidity is uh, by this HNO2 and HNO3. So when this HNO2, HNO3 react with the magnesium, it forms hydrogen atom, atom and this hydrogen uh, uh, react with the nitrogen and forms ammonia that is responsible for more growth of uh, plant and everything in this study. So this is example of, nat uh, I, I already showed you before natural uh, thunder, and this is example of uh, man-made thunder. It's a, uh, it's a device made by Plasma Biosense Research Center for artificial thundering. So we can use this kind of strategies uh, for future uh, agriculture processes also uh, for sustainable uh, development and sustainable uh, agriculture. So conclusion from the agriculture part, plant respond well available and nitrogen from metal induced neutralized plasma treated water uh, that is magnesium have more effect, more good effect. We found increased germination rate. We found lo longer shoot and root length. We found deep green color of leaves and increased protein content in this part. And I will give you some example for food preservation. Uh, some data is missing. Uh, actually, we checked on strawberry. Uh, we dissolved, we uh, mixed strawberry with the bacterial uh, media and dried them. And then we treated with the plasma activated water and found very good effect, uh, bacterial inactivation effect by this water. Same case in mushroom. We, uh, we uh, cultured mushroom in water as well as plasma activated water and checked their fungus growth and bacterial growth and found very good inactivation by plasma activated water. Which in, this is a very uh, well-known process here. Uh, the some machines, some people developed machine, uh, plasma machine to preserve better this tortilla bread. We can say roti also for extending lifetime of this kind of breads. And some people also treating seeds by a wide variety of plasma devices, the wide range of plasma devices, wide size. So these are some examples for shrimp. Uh, this is a study on shrimp. Uh, we can use plasma activated water. We can make uh, ice from the plasma activated water to store uh, seafood or shrimps. And this is our own uh, PBRC study. We can extend the lifetime of this seafood very easily uh, by using uh, plasma activated water ice as compared to just normal ice. So we checked bacterial and some fungal uh, growth on this uh, stored sh uh, shrimps. And we found that, that there is no uh, growth on this uh, plasma activated uh, ice as compared to this normal ice. And we also reported uh, one uh, paper on uh, plasma activated water with ultrasound on chicken meat. So we uh, checked the chicken meat by using this kind of uh, two methods, uh, combination method, plasma and ultrasound together and found very good effect on the chicken meat infection by the bacteria or fungus. And we checked the various kinds of bacteria on chicken meat, which are morphologically, you can see here, they are totally damaged and inactivated by 
plasma activity water and ultrasound together. And recently we published one paper for water disinfection, purif water purification, biodecontamination, and waste water treatment. So you can go through this paper. It have very wide uh, information for all these uh, biological uh, treatments. Nowadays, our main focus is also uh, coronavirus. We got a very big project on coronavirus in activation recently. So this, I, I will show you some uh, some slides also because this study is not published and uh, we need to we need to do too much work on in this study. This is about the plasma generated air environment, and we used uh, in this study we used human coronavirus two to nine E, we obtained from ATCC, and host cell and we used lung cells MRC five human lung cells for this study. So we generated plasma air by using this kind of device, facing discharge device. And uh, we checked log TCID 50 as well as SI index. And we found when we use only plasma generated ozone, then we have up to 90, more than 92% or 94% inhibition. And when we use complete air gas plasma with limitation of ozone, then we found 99.9, .9, more than 99.9% .9 inactivation of coronaviruses. In another study, we prepared a pl plasma generated NO water. And this NO water, we checked on the coronaviruses, same model, uh, human coronavirus 2 to 9E and MRC5 lung cells as a host cell. And we checked uh, TCID 50 as well as log TCID 50. And we found that the up to two log order, we can reduce uh, by using this uh, plasma activated water. And the viability, uh, the toxicity on normal host, host cell is very less. So even at 2000 uh, micromoles, we don't have any toxicity on the normal uh, lung cells of human. We check the SI index. SI index is the indicator by which any drug is evaluated, whether it is safe or not. And if, if SI index is less than one, uh, then uh, you can doubt on the drug. But if the SI index is more than one, then you, you can be comfortable for application on real human. So SI index for this plasma activated water is 29.10. That is very uh, good uh, SI index equal to, uh, or maybe more than hydroxychloroquine on, on other drugs such as ritnovir or ripamycin and other drugs. And CC50, uh, the toxicity on uh, human uh, host cell is 21.68 micromole and inhibition to the uh, viruses. Uh, EC50 concentration is 74.5 micromole here on human coronavirus. And future for the last part of this presentation, future perspective and commercialization, we need to work on synergy between plasma and nanomaterials. We need to discuss more about cancer immunity cycle and immunomodulation. We have to investigate selectivity on various kind of human, human immune cells, normal cell and cancer cells. We have to standardize doses of plasma for medicine as well as agriculture. And we also have to uh, uh, investigate more on the virus inactivation application mechanisms. And finally, we have to think about the market for commercialization of plasma devices. This must be our main goal uh, after everything. And myself, I published uh, to 105 papers up to now. And if I, if I say about the Plasma Biosense Research Center, uh, within last year, we published more than 1,000 people from our center. And these are some commercial devices we have. This is tooth whitening devices. It is available in market. It is co-developed with PBRC Center. And this device is for skin treatment, skin and aesthetic devices. You can make yourself young by using this kind of devices. We have some wound healing and burn healing devices also, co-developed with PBRC. And this device is by, uh, uh, for skin disorders such as acne, facial scars, and wrinkles. See, these all companies are working together with us uh, for making commercial devices. And this is real devices after MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. We developed this device in 2016. And it is, uh, we sold out this device to more than 5,000 ambulances in Korea. So it is very good for small area sterilization of viruses. We already proved it before. We have other kind of devices such as plasma cabinet for food preservation, 
and some big area is, uh, space sterilizers, living room sterilizers uh, by using plasma. This device, I, I will tell you the use of this device for the skin disorders such as acute atopic dermatitis. It is before and after, you can see the difference. Sorosis, another skin disease, before and after, after using this device, PlaBio S1. And PlaBio G4, uh, acne, specific for acne treatment, before and after using this device. So these all devices are available in market in Korea, maybe not in India, because they have some local market up to now. Maybe they will focus India uh, soon. And this is the uh, last uh, main important thing I want to tell you. This is coronavirus inactivation device, as well as find dust particle removal device we developed together with Bioplatech, our company. And the name of this device is PlasQ Air. It used to sterilize coronaviruses up to a 33 square meter room. So uh, uh, a big uh, house can be cleaned by this kind of device. Air in of the big house can be cleaned by using this kind of devices. And we got global award also in 2021 recently for developing this device in Korea. And uh, yeah, you can see it's in my home. So we are also using at our home. I removed my previous sterilizer and put this sterilizer for coronavirus inactivation even it, at my home. So this is very, very nice machine. Hopefully, um, uh, I will provide you in India also soon this machine to all of you, including Professor uh, Vice Chancellor, Professor Rao, Professor other professors, Professor Rambir Singh, and Professor Hajarika. And this is so it is uh, 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 that is uh, it is going to be uh, that easy to provide uh, this many number of people that mission. Why not, sir? Ah, uh, okay. It is from your department. Yeah, co-developed with PBRC. I have it in my home, sir. This is in my home. Okay. We are using it personally, this device. A uh -huh. very nice device, very nice device. And so, one, more, one more important thing is that if you we tested on human lung cells, it is polyphytic mm -hmm. human lung cells. So okay. there is a regeneration effect by this device on human lung cell. And it is killing coronavirus. We have to what about viral cells uh, proliferation? If you are going to use this. Inactivation, huh? sir. Inactivation. So, 99.9 okay. more than 99.9 percent .9 inactivation okay. of uh, coronaviruses mm -hmm. and uh, proliferation of human lung cell at certain doses. So, how to use that? Nothing, sir. It's a air sterilizer. Just put it at your home. Okay. Yeah. Okay, inside the home. Okay. Yeah. This can be, no, this is not only for home. This machine can, we propose office. this machine for small classrooms or university classrooms, as well as offices, public facilities, good, such as good. police stations, trains, as well as uh, some public uh, transport facilities, airports, everywhere. Why don't you uh, share the technology to the Indian companies so no, it can be manufactured here and uh, to give it to public, no, that is that will be more better, I think. That's why I'm saying you, sir. Maybe soon I will provide you this machine at uh, Mizoram University. Yes, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just had one question: How plasma? Uh, you are mentioning plasma um, uh, treatment for cancer and uh, even for corona. Also, you are mentioning that it can be working out. Yes. So. Uh, what about the uh, hot gas when it is delivered from the plasma gas apparatus? Uh, is it going to spoil the tissues, general tissues also? Nothing, sir. No, there is no such effect. We use air gas, air and ambient air, environmental air, and uh -huh. we produce various kind of RONS. The temperature will be uh, aerial no, no. temperature only. You can just touch by your hand for a long time. No big problem. Yeah, it's a okay, very okay. biocompatible, very biocompatible. Okay, okay. That, that's just I'm personally I using this device from since from two months in my home yes, yes. Uh, for 24 hours and I never found any kind of toxicity or some problem in my family. Very good, very good. It is very good. Yeah. Um, it is very nice, I know. Uh, One more uh, effect I got, I put here uh, near near this device, I put my fish culture and I found that the fish are really happy with this device. Oh. <laughs> this from two months. Yeah. Mm. So usually we have some uh, fish death within one month or two months. And from after this device, there is no fish death 
from since from last two months. So uh, well, well, actually, what is the mechanism? It is going to kill the cancer cells. It is going to be a long run. Total cancer cell is going to be killed, or only that particular part or regeneration of the cancer cells also going to be affected by this. Uh, so there are two kind of asthma, asthma treatment. To what you are referring? No. Yes. Yes. so there are two kind of effect one is that uh, we are making our immune system stronger by using plasma treatments as well as uh, we are inhibiting cancer itself by plasma so okay. two effects are going on together parallelly here yes sir um, okay no i got a little uh, confusion because uh, you are showing a machine which is going with the more pressure of hot gas whether it is going to uh, uh, affect the normal cells also or the cancer cells at the particular time it is going to be killed but afterwards regeneration again of uh, cancer cells is possible no that's what i was uh, to in vivo experiment as well as some skin cancer uh, experiment done by max planck institute we already hmm. confirmed this the, all in publication that normal cell viability is very least affected by this kind of treatment specifically i told you about the ros selective model ros uh, yes, ros model so that, that is mainly responsible for specific effect in cancer cells only not on normal cells so ros based model we already reported many time uh, in publication so well uh, i think uh, they can take up the questions from the participants because there are uh, participants questions also better uh, like i don't want to uh, take their time <laughs> thank you sir thank you thank sir you. i have two more slides uh, uh, if i can finish yes yes, yes, yes please please yeah thank you thank you sir so this is korea you can if i invite uh, everyone especially professor uh, rao vice chancellor of uh, uh, mizoram university and professor hajarika and professor rambir singh and other department mates come here enjoy korean food enjoy korean culture and dresses and uh, this is uh, uh, seoul uh, our city capital city you can enjoy night life as well as day life here and we have very nice uh, bands such as bangtan boy band we called it bts very famous world worldwide famous band we have gangnam style you heard it on youtube and in marriage parties and other parties so you can enjoy all these people you can meet all these people here in seoul and this is about advertisement in my lab if you if you are interested please apply to me my email id is koshik.nagendra@gmail.com you can take my contact from professor ramveer singh also and uh, uh, we open position for master as well as phd students uh, but we need uh, english proficiency test uh, certificate such as ielts topic toefl cbt ibt from toefl and taps CFFR and TAPS. Any certificate is okay. And um, main area for work is microbiology, virus biology, bacteria, fungus biology, molecular oncology, immunomodulation, cell biology, and biomedical nanotechnology. Main projects we have hybrid nanomaterial for cancer treatment and bioplasma for virus, bacteria, and fungus uh, inactivation. And this is our plasma uh, biosynthesis center people uh, members. Some are not here. They are maybe absent. so uh, i am here he is professor choi who is the the director of plasma biosciences research center very nice person he will be happy to meet you he already sent his message to you all of you and to and he invited you uh, if you are interested please come here and uh, work together with us and special thanks i want to give to professor rao vice chancellor of uh, mizoram university professor hajarika professor ramveer singh sir thank you very much yeah thank you uh, dr nagendra for such a nice lecture and uh, at the outset i'll say that it was very uh, like diverse like starting from cancer going to uh, agriculture then food preservation then finally even touching some part of corona so thank you very much uh, for uh, the such a elaborative lecture eh? so thank we you, have uh, plenty of questions from uh, Uh, the participants and we are thankful to honorable vice chancellor that he has initiated uh, the uh, sequence of questions so uh, let us start with because we have questions from almost every every stream every every like field so let us start with from the cancer and biology and, and the medical science part one question is regarding hair loss treatment with plasma 
So yes, uh, uh, one participant has asked that is there any product available in the market uh, at present which is having a plasma for treatment of hair loss? We are working on it. We are worked, and uh, we contacted one company also that is Luxai Life Science. It's based in Hyderabad. Uh, Luxai Life Science is based in Hyderabad, and it's a good company. And we are working with them. If they can, uh, if they can launch in India, it will be uh, very nice for all of us. Okay, thank you. Another question is pertaining to the uh, possibly it is the ROS enzymes, like the enzymes which are the uh, like oxidative enzymes. So do we have some effect of the plasma on the enzyme itself, like expression of the enzymes? Yes, we got uh, uh, some antioxidant enzymes, you mean to say? We checked it. There, there is alteration on enzymes itself on antioxidant enzymes by using this kind of ROS. Sometimes if you give stress to these uh, two cells, we got a higher expression, in the, uh, higher expression of this antioxidant enzymes. And if we increase more doses, more dose of plasma, then it is inhibiting the uh, expression of that enzyme. So finally, I can say, yes, we have alteration in enzymes itself. Okay, great. So one question is uh, pertaining to, to the use of uh, plasma, cold plasma technology in uh, uh, heart diseases, congenital heart diseases. Do we have some references or it is, is it being used? Best example is NO, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is used by several clinical doctors to treat various kind of heart disease or blood pressure, blood related disease. So basically, yes, we can focus on heart disease, uh, this kind of uh, areas by using plasma. We have to tune our plasma for according to disease. So we have to tune our plasma to produce more nitric oxide, less other species, and then we can use it for heart diseases and heart treatments also. Okay, okay, thank you. So uh, now we have uh, some questions pertaining to agriculture and uh, uh, food application of plasma. So one question is, uh, uh, it is, uh, let me start from here. Like, so uh, let me start from here. So we, do we have like some technology available for field application directly? Like, is it like some setup we have already available where uh, companies can, they can purchase it directly and they can use it for uh, generating uh, uh, the water that is treated by plasma, which can be used for hydroponics. So do we- like, uh, India, no company. Yeah, in India, there is no such company that who can who can sell uh, plasma treated water, but we are focused on it and we are working on it. We maybe within one year or two year, we will provide in India also those kind of devices to treat water and for supply. Okay. okay. Inject, uh, of course, on these. We are working on it and uh, we are getting plants in the plasma treated water. And what we found that not only good, we are getting uh, good immunity also. Like uh, this, chilies usually have some infection from uh, some microbes. And after using this water, those infections are just gone. It is reported by agriculture, this uh, managers of that dance. That guys, another I think disconnected. Uh, yes, sir. I it, think just wait. I think speaker got is he, is disconnected. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Wait. I'm kindly wait. I request the participant to just bear with us and wait for a second so that by the time he rejoins. Joined. Yes, Dr. Nagendra, you are audible. Yes, just yes, um, unmute your mic. It was automatically gone. Yes, 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 yes. Your, your, your. Uh, Sorry for it. Uh, yes, yes. Now, just yes, uh, again, I go to the question. Uh, some more questions. Uh, then uh, one of the participants has asked that, is there any side effect of plasma in food preservation? Like, do we have this technique in market and do we have, like, do you anticipate any kind of uh, 
uh, side effects of uh, our, yes sir our collaborator from thailand and from korea already started it and thailand have uh, some two three company working together with us in thailand for food preservation so they already started this thing and they reported very nice uh, results uh, from this food preservation process by using plasma and obviously we cannot have any kind of side effect because the ice i showed you ice made by plasma activated water it's just ice you are just preserving your food on that so and uh, other other kind of food preservation is just uh, treatment of that uh, plasma on the food material and we never found any kind of effect bad effect on this kind of preservations in it's already 2 3 year gone in continuation yes, to that i have a question like uh, particularly in india we are using uv as a sterilizing material largely like yes yes we for sterilizing water we are using uv for sterilizing a lot of food products yes like, what do you anticipate like so far i think we don't have any kind of research in india where people are thinking of something else other than uv so, so somebody have... reported uh, any negative effect of uv on food sterilization no like so far but i have heard i have read it somewhere that suppose the energy of uv if it is dissipated in food yes, products yes yes possibility that can produce some the... kind of ros and high amount of uv can produce ros and rns inside food material okay so nobody is doing that but that's why i'm saying you the high energy of uv is also not good for food preservation uh, areas so and but plasma have very less amount of uv and basically it is a surface discharge and uh, there is no big problem no high energy is there you can run plasma devices with 1 watt so uh, problem is less as compared to uv okay okay great thank you now we have some questions pertaining to agricultural sciences and one question is regarding uh, uh, stimulation of uh, seed germination by plasma so does it reduce the germination time yes okay germination time is reduced in our study okay okay and uh, like so far like if we do it with edible seeds like uh, do we have some kind of uh, adverse impact if we are using something which is edible no problem at all okay yeah i i personally saying you here that i used to drink every day one glass of plasma water to inactivate whatever virus bacteria and fungus i have in my stomach and my neck after this corona virus uh, situation since from last one year so i cannot see personally any uh, side effect if i am drinking it okay and one so question is, yeah one question is pertaining to the fertilizers like uh, uh, the question is like uh, nowadays we are using a lot of chemical fertilizers so if we use uh, uh, plasma for degradation of these kind of fertilizers in soil is it possible yes yes a recent our research, recent project is also focused on the tps tps is petroleum hydrocarbons you know that okay petroleum hydrocarbons are very uh, big problem okay so our our goal in this project is to degrade those kind of petroleum hydrocarbons or those kind of waste material by using plasma in soil liquid water and air both all three things and one of the participant has inquired about uh, the product uh, made by our institute that is plebu s1 for acne treatment and uh, the uh, candidate has asked the participant has asked that it is is it available in market in maybe in india or maybe in korea Yes, in India and uh, in no no in Korea and China it is available. I can send you link, but in India it is not available. We have to discuss with some company to make it available in India. Okay, okay then. Okay. So, uh, but if you, you want, uh, I send you those kind of devices. Maybe uh, VC sir has suggested that you can tie up with some companies in India and you can launch these kind of products in India because it will be. very useful for uh, like uh, like so, uh, recently we recent yes sir recently we contacted one company luxai life science in hyderabad and uh, this company is very nice uh, dr ram uh, upadhyay is the ceo of that company and other two ceo are also there they are working together with us for uh, air sterilizer and hair growth treatment device 
both both uh, projects uh, we are working with the indian company other product we will launch with other companies or maybe same company that depends on the collaborations and mous okay okay then so thank you uh, dr nagin for such a uh, uh, nice presentation and and uh, addressing the qu uh, queries of all the participants uh, honorable vc sir do you have some more queries you uh, want to add up something sir you no know, it's okay fine the questions are not there but uh, uh, you can share your email uh, if anyone asks so no we, we can send you can yeah, type yeah. your email no yes sir yes sir yes sir yes. Yes. i will contact you sir. yes sir okay 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 okay, okay. So, thank, so, you. So, thank you thank you thank you thank you, uh, thank you sir thank Please you very much sometimes so now i request our head professor tridip hazarika for a formal vote of thanks brief vote of thanks thank you professor ramveer singh sir honorable vice chancellor sir professor nagendra kolsik and my fellow participants it is quite an honor for me to propose the vote of thanks first of all i'd like to thank our honorable vice chancellor professor kres sambasiva rao actually that he is the encouraging force behind the, all this webinar series in uh, that uh, mizoram university and uh, because of his uh, that uh, consistent inspirations and uh, encouragement we could organize such uh, this kind of webinars and uh, thank you very much sir i'd like to offer my sincere thanks to professor nagendra kosik from that kongan uh, university seoul republic of korea Yes, I'm really that uh, and that uh, grateful to you for that uh, very encouraging lectures, and uh, this is actually really uh, that uh, very new topics for all the that participants, and uh, I'm very much sure that all the participants could learn a lot, and uh, they are really that uh, very that uh, encouraged by that uh, seeing your lectures. Thank you very much, sir. Even from the that chat box as well as the from the that uh, question and answer sec sections. we could see that uh, that all the participants are really that uh, they have sent that at a message that they are uh, that this lecture is very very informative and they are that they really encouraged that uh, from these lectures i'd like to thank all the participants actually that uh, the participants are the that uh, uh, that uh, driving force for this uh, webinars actually without the participants it is uh, this webinar would not be that uh, successful so my sincere thanks to all the that uh, participants who have uh, registered and uh, attended this uh, webinar i am really thankful to all the staffs of uh, icp mizoram university for that uh, and uh, more particularly mr suraj the system admin an uh, system analyst uh, icp center mizoram university for arranging the that uh, internet and all other facilities for this webinars i'd like to thank the that part, public relations shell mizoram university for giving the that wide publicity in the social media and other media about this webinar last but not the least i would like to thank all the teaching faculties as well as the that non teaching staffs of the department of hem mizoram universities for their cooperations to make the seminar successful with these words i would like to conclude my vote of thanks and once again i'd like to thank dr nagendra kumar kosik for your very nice Lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank professor. You, thank Anjali. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, professor Rao, sir. Yes, thank, thank you, Ramesh Singh, sir. Yes. Please visit uh, Korea sometime. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh,